Thanks for joining us on Scripps News Live. I'm Chris Wynn. Right now, more states are pushing to ban diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, specifically on campuses and in government. The board that oversees Florida's 12 public universities says no state or federal money can be spent on DEI programs. It's part of a national Republican push. The board also said the topic of sociology is no longer a core requirement. A U.S. history class favored by conservatives will replace it. A proposed bill in Kentucky's legislature also targets DEI programs. It would stop funding for those programs at colleges and universities, as well as eliminate race-based scholarships. It also ends deferential or preferential treatment for any student or employee based on race, religion, sex, color, or national origin. A similar bill covers kindergarten through 12th grade schools. And on Tuesday, Utah's governor signed a bill preventing diversity training, hiring, and inclusion programs in his state. The bill applies to universities and state governments. The uh, Republican governor, Spencer Cox, also signed a bill that requires people to use bathrooms and locker rooms that match their sex at birth. It applies to public schools and government buildings. States like Florida and Texas first banned DEI initiatives at colleges last year. Since then, others, including Iowa and Oklahoma, enacted similar laws. Joining us now is Melanie Collette, an ambassador for Project 21, a, project, a program of the National Center for Public Policy Research, a conservative think tank. Think tank. Uh, Melanie, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so DEI initiatives are in place to promote fair treatment of historically marginalized groups. So that's what advocates say. Uh, what do you make of states doing away with these programs? The issue that I have with them doing away with, um, with them uh, picking people based on color is that color is not a determinant, typically, of what a person's skill set is or what their life experience has been. I would argue that is typically more social socioeconomic rather than skin color. Not to mention that it's completely unconstitutional to, to give preferential treatment to someone because of an immutable trait such as their such as their race. So I think it's a good idea uh, as a black woman who is a former educator, uh, the DEI movement and affirmative action movement has been a, a cloud hanging over my profession life quite honestly because now when people look at me they are not sure whether or not I was an affirmative action hire or a DEI hire when oftentimes I was more qualified than my white counterparts so for me I think it's a great idea I think that we should look more at the individuals and their experiences at and decide whether or not they need extra help to meet the standard keep the standard where it is and if someone needs additional help to meet that standard because of their life circumstances, no matter what color they are, then I am all for us doing that and helping everyone get ahead. But I'm not for uh, someone just doing, looking at my face or another black person's face and deciding that I've had some horrible life experience. That means you have to treat me with kid gloves. Melanie, if colleges see a need on their campus, though, what is the harm in making spaces more inclusive for people of color or someone with a disability? Well, I don't, of course, in a, in a case of a disability, but I even resent the way the question is phrased. It is, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm a former educator, and oftentimes people of color are lumped in with people with special needs. And I, I resent that. To be honest with you, I don't like it at all. We, people of color, melanin is not uh, some kind of handicap that needs to be, you know, where, where we need some things adjusted because of the color of our skin. Now, if we have experiences in education or socioeconomic that need to be addressed, that has held us back from getting the education that we need, then absolutely you should do that, black, white, green, or otherwise. But I don't, I don't even like, and I've seen this done often in education, I don't even like the fact that they will lump people of color in with people who maybe have Down syndrome or are blind or deaf or something like that as if melanin is some kind of deficit. Yeah, like well, uh, you know, th that doesn't happen everywhere, Melanie. Um, I myself am also a person of color, as you can see. Um, going mm -hmm. back to the Utah example, 
Uh, we've been hearing that this could lead to the dis discontinuation of, you know, special graduation ceremonies um, for, you know, that have been traditionally held by uh, students of color. Um, we've also heard even the, the week of welcome orientation activities where um, other students typically are able to, you know, come together and, and find one another, especially uh, on a campus that is oftentimes so far away from home. I myself really enjoyed that opportunity. I, I appreciated that the university offered those programs and I felt seen. So what do you say to those folks like me um, who disagree with you? Uh, you're, you, you, it's America. You can absolutely disagree with me. You have every right, and, and as do I have every right. I have never had a problem um, feeling like I was seen or not seen because I'm a black woman. Even in undergrad, in grad school, never had that issue. And I would argue that it's because no one ever instilled that in me or told me that that was the case. So I didn't know that I wasn't quote unquote supposed to be in certain spaces because no one ever said, because you're black, you don't belong in that space. What I was always told is because you're black, you may have to work a little harder to get in that space, but that space is your, if you, yours if you're willing to work for it, which I have been. So I've never had that issue, and uh, I would argue as someone who was in education for 24 years that that mindset is part of an indoctrination mindset where ed public educators tend to speak victimhood into people of color instead of victory and resilience, which in this Black History Month, this day, first day of Black History Month, is important to remember, not to view ourselves as people who ha had a really hard time, not to only view ourselves as that, but view ourselves as people who have overcome quite a bit and have that skill set in our history. And since we can do that, I would rather have said to my students, hey, you can do this. You have a long history of people who look just like you who can do this instead of telling them the other way around. Well, my parents always told me that I could do uh, everything that I set my mind to, regardless of my skin color. And so I'm very appreciative to them. And I know a lot of folks who uh, enjoy these programs and appreciate them uh, can say the same. Hey, Melanie, before you go, I do want to ask you, uh, if not DI programs, uh, what should be done to ensure marginalized groups receive equal access and opportunities when the data does show that they're often discriminated against in America, where we do see you know, racism, ableism, sexism, religious discrimination and more uh, those really do continue to be issues in America yes they are issues are they pervasive and systemic I don't agree with that but anytime that racism or sexism or any kind of other ism rears its ugly head I say stand up drag that person publicly shame them whoever it is, if it's a person or an institution, then we absolutely should make that person suffer for having done that. But what I think we should be doing, the first thing I think we should be doing is not automatically saying because you were born a certain way, you're marginalized, you're put upon. I strongly believe that what we should be doing is speaking resilience, victory, and hard work into anyone, black, white, brown, or otherwise. That's what we should be doing. Melanie Collette, an ambassador for Project 21. Thanks so much for coming on today and sharing your perspective. And we hope you'll come back soon. Thank you for having me. All right.